Hey, how you guys doing today? I'm so glad you guys have joined me for another Sunday. Um, thank you for joining Changing Lanes to see what we are doing here. And I just, I'm just so thankful for the goodness of God, the peace of God, and um, that surpasses all understanding. And uh, I'm just grateful, thankful. And without further ado, I want us to get get ahead for today's sermon. And I have it titled today, I once was lost, but now I am found. I once was lost, but now I'm found. And I just want to pray for you guys. God, I just thank you for your goodness. God, I thank you for your peace. God, I thank you for everything that, that, that you've done for us. And God, I pray that your peace would just enter in, God. And, it would, and, you, and we would just press into your presence. And Father, I pray right now, God, that you would open up our hearts to receive the goodness that's in your name. And I thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God, that when we would hear this message, that we would not leave the same. And I thank you for it in the name of Jesus' name. Amen. So I have a message today, and I'll be coming from Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. And uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and um, get get started. So it says, Then he said, A certain man who had two sons, and a younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion. Give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to him his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, there wasted his possessions with prodigal living, but when he but when he spent it all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine, and he would gladly be filled with his stomach with the pods and the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I and our perish with hunger. I will arise, go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and before you, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And when he arose and came to his father, when he when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And the father said to his servant, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry for for this. My son was dead and is alive again. And he was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what these things meant? And he said to him, your brother has come. And, and, and because he has, received, he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fattened calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, lo, these many years I have been serving you. And I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, son, you are always with me and all that I have is yours. And it was right that we should make merry and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. This is the word of God. We can see that. I think we can all see ourselves in this passage. We have drifted away from the Lord. We have drifted away from him. We have drifted away from our, our heavenly father. So in this parable. We have a son, two sons, and the first son, he he just wanted his portion. 
<laughs> to spend on prodigal living and do what he did and, and he spent it all and he goes back to his father's house to humble himself and just to, to eat as a servant and i think he there is a different version of him that we see from the beginning because in the beginning he just cared about him he cared about he wants to do what he wants to do he don't want to be under this his father's house anymore and he left and I think with us, we want that sense of control. We want that sense of, man, let me do it myself. Let me go the route that I want to go. Let me, God, just give it to me. I don't want nothing to do with you. I want you to give me what I, what I, what I need, and I want to go my way. And with this passage, we're going to examine how we were lost. Or not only how we were lost, but how he was lost and now he was found. Typically, when you lose something, it has an importance to you. Depending on what you lost. If you lost a car and you see that car again, it, 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 you get a different sense of happiness. When you lose a spouse and you gain it back, there's a sense of happiness. When you lose a job and you get it back, there is a happiness. There is a light on the inside of you that just lights up. I was lost. And now I was found. The first thing that we must understand to understand is just how this son drifted away from his earthly father and was lost didn't have anything to eat didn't have anywhere to go couldn't make his situation any better without god we are lost without god we have nothing without god we are nothing and i just want us to understand that because the same feeling that this son had when he had nowhere to go when he had nowhere to eat when he had nothing to do this is us because in a spiritual sense, without God, we are nothing. Really, in a physical sense, without God, we are nothing. It doesn't matter how much money that you would attain or how much money you don't attain. If you don't have God, you don't have anything. And we see that in what we see from this son is that he goes back to his father. And when, was, when we realize that we're going in this way, and we realize this, when is it going to click in our minds that we don't have the answers, that we don't have the shelter, that we don't have really the resources that only comes in God, that only comes in him. And, 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 and a lot of times we want to live this worldly life, which is what his son wanted to do. He wanted to do the things that he didn't get to do there. He wanted to live this prodigal life, but all this prodigal life led to was him feeling empty. All this prodigal life did with him not having anywhere to go. All this prodigal life left was all of his possessions gone. And I just want us to understand that this prodigal and this way that we want to live, it is going to leave us empty. It is going to leave us further away than we were before. It is going to leave us alone but if we would just get into that place when we understand that we are lost without god it would change some things and, and here's the thing that that it would change and this is what this man did he humbled himself okay he humbled himself this is what he did he says but when he came to himself and he said how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger, I will arise, go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And when he arose, he came to his father. The first thing, the second thing we have to understand is we have to humble ourselves, just like this guy did. He didn't want to go back to his father's house as his son, because he, he understood that I'm not worthy to be called your son anymore. I'm going to go as your servant. 
as one of your higher servants. I'm not going to think because of what I'm connected to as my father that you're just willing to take me in like that. He humbled himself because he, he didn't come expecting to be his son anymore. Have we humbled ourselves? Not humbling in the sense of making yourself just lord just to make yourself lord but have you humbled yourself and lowered yourself and approached the throne of grace he humbled himself do you understand the humility the humility that it had to take for him to even consider going back to his father thinking that you used your father to get prodigal possessions to live the life that you wanted to live and to humble yourself to say i have to go back that the thing that I left, the place that I left was actually the place that I needed to be. He humbled himself. When was the last time you humbled yourself? And if you're in that place where you're, you're struggling and you're like, I want to be found. The first thing that you have to do is realize that without God, we are lost. Second thing is you have to humble yourself and come to his throne of grace, just like this this son, he humbled himself and said, I'm going back to my father and I'm going to tell my father I sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer to be worthy. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, but I'm going to go and work as a servant. I'm not going to think I'm any better than any of those servants that are there, but I'm going to humble myself. And have we humbled ourselves and understood that we are no better than any other servants? That we are no better than anyone on this earth. And have we humbled ourselves to understand that we need to approach the throne of grace? That's what he did. He, he, he came and he humbled himself. So the first thing we have to understand is have we admitted to ourselves that we are lost and we want to be found by God? Second thing is have we humbled ourselves and approached the throne of grace? Here's the third thing, which is such good news. And he says, but the father said to him, said to his servants, bring out the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fattened calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry for this. My son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be married. They began to be happy. I want us to understand that he was lost and now he is found. His father met him with compassion. His father met him with love. And his father gave him his best, even when his son lowered himself and said, I'm not worthy to be called your son. And, I, and what am I trying to say here? What I'm trying to say, thirdly, is that when you humble yourself and you approach the throne of grace, God, Jesus Christ, is going to meet you with love. He is going to meet you with compassion. He is going to give you his best. He is going to give you his all. If you would just humble yourself and approach his throne of grace, Compassion and love will meet you at that door. Compassion and love will meet you in the midst of where you are right now. And I just want to declare that to you right now because there are some people out there that feel like they can't approach this throne of grace because they're going to feel ashamed or they're going to feel condemned or they're going to feel just, um, just sorry. But I just want to declare to you guys today that if you would just approach the throne of grace, that Jesus is going to meet you with compassion and love. That look at what he did on the cross when he died for you when you didn't even know him and he rose again. That there is life in his name. And I just want to declare today and I want to declare right now in the name of Jesus that life and compassion and love and of Jesus Christ, he wants to give that to you. But we have to approach his throne of grace. That Jesus grace is it's here for us. He's he's been here for us. And he said, my son was lost and now is found that when his son came back in and he came to him, he remembered 
the offense no more. He remembered what his son did no more, but he met him with love. And I just want us to understand that and feel that in our hearts. That Jesus is meeting us with love. He's not meeting us with what we did in the past. He's not meeting us with what hurt our heart. He's meeting us with love and compassion. So we have to understand first, we have to realize that we are lost. Without Jesus, we are not found. Two, we must humble ourselves and approach the throne of grace. Thirdly, when we humble and approach ourselves and approach the throne of grace, Jesus meets us with love and compassion. And he's going to give us his best. And lastly, knowing this. So I talked about the first son and I talked about how he was found. But uh, the last point focuses on the second son. And it says, now his older son was in the field and he came and drew near to the house and he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fattened calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his fa father came out and pleaded, pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, lo, these many years I have been serving you and I've never transgressed your commandment at any time. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I make marry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came who has devoured your, your livelihood with harlots. You killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, son, you are always with me and all that I have is yours. And it was right that we should make merry and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. So I want the fourth point. I want us to understand that we may be in this position where this, uh, his son was in. That when Jesus meets new believers with, 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 with love and compassion and with all of this, we tend to, to go, why haven't we gotten blessed this way? Why haven't we got our blessing? But we have to understand the perspective of the other son that was lost and is found. That he was dead, now is alive. That it, every sinner that repents and comes into a relationship with Jesus Christ, they were dead and now is alive. Have we understood that? And we have to check our pride at the door. That's the fourth point. We have to check our pride because our pride will, 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 will put us into a prison, into a handicapped position where we don't see what has actually happened. What, what that he was missing, that his brother has actually been saved. He was missing that his brother was lost, but now is found. We can't let our feelings of a blessing of getting what we feel like we deserve to stop our compassion from seeing a sinner have life. And I just want to declare to you today that if you would understand that I was lost, now I'm found, but to understand that we have to understand that without God, we're lost. Two, with us being lost, we must humble ourselves and approach the throne of grace. Number three, when we approach that throne of grace, we are met with compassion and love. And four, we must check our pride at the door because new believers that come in, we should rejoice in that. that Jesus will leave the 99 just to find the one. And I, and I just want to declare that to you today. That if you would believe this and you would accept this, your testimony could be I was lost. Now. That I was lost, that I was dead in my trespasses and sins. But because of Jesus Christ, I am saved. And I, and I just want to declare that to you guys today. And speak life over you guys today. And I thank you guys for joining me and everything. Thank you in the name of Jesus.